So in this video, I want to take you through a quick little walkthrough of, you know, one of my favorite formats in my personal collection of workouts that whenever I'm in a situation where I have to lose a ton of weight real quick, like right now, I, uh, for the, some of you guys who've seen the video I put up a couple, a couple days ago, I'm getting off a debilitating back injury from the past two years where really I couldn't work out. So a little fluffier than I like to be right now. Um, but now I can actually go work out, do the treadmill, do my kettlebell stuff again, all the things I enjoy doing. And I know by going through this routine right here that I'm about to show you right now, with a couple other ones that we're going to put out over the next couple weeks, I'm going to be able to go from where I'm at right now to where I want to be body-wise in the next three to five months because I've done these workouts for years, I've used them before, and I've always had great results with them. And more importantly, I've helped them, I've used these with clients, and they've gotten great results with them as well. So now I want to show you the quick little two-minute breakdown version so you have a visual example of what they actually look like, right? Um, and these exercises, they're very simple to execute. And if there's an injury you gotta work around or a piece of equipment you might not have, there's a lot of different ways you can modify this workout. So don't really get so stuck up on the specifics of, I need a treadmill or I need one of those, cur I need a curved treadmill or I need a kettlebell or I don't have a TRX or some of the other equipment we're gonna use right now. If you don't have something, there's tons of ways you can modify this workout. If you're getting stuck and you're having issues, you just don't know how to swap something out, like always, drop me a DM, shoot me an email, text message me. Either myself or somebody from my team will reach out to you. We'll get you through text messages, call, email, whatever. We'll give you some ideas of how you can modify this workout to fit your lifestyle and your situation because this workout might work great for me, but if it doesn't fit your lifestyle and it doesn't fit your situation and you don't enjoy doing it, chances are you're not going to do it. And if you could do this kind of a workout for three, to four three to four times a week, 20 to 40 minutes each time, you're going to get great results from it. And it's not going to be the same workout. You always want to change it up. Let me just preface that. You're not going to do the exact same two workouts every time. You would want to do a different workout each day. This would just be two of those four workouts you'd be doing. All right. So let's get into these. Um, and if they work out, like always, once we're done, try them on your own. And if you get some results from them, shoot me a message. Let me know how they go. Let's take a look. So let's take a quick look at what the workout's going to look like, right? So right here, you got an idea of what's going to happen. In part A, we got 30 seconds of treadmill sprints with a 30 second rest. We're going to do that five to seven times. I like to keep my speed somewhere around like five to six miles an hour, all right? And what I do is every round that goes by, I try to increase that speed a little bit. Now, you're gonna see I have one of those curved treadmills where I really can't control the speed. So my intensity increases. This could be me trying to push myself at a faster pace, right? Um, I like to also set my incline to a level three when I'm on a treadmill because one of the problems you have with treadmills is they're very flat and you're not really creating forward momentum. You're just maintaining a point in space where by putting yourself on a slight incline of three, now you actually have to push off with the calves. You'll get better driving mechanics with the glutes and the hips. You'll get more backside activation. You'll stay out of the hip flexors more. So obviously if you have knee problems or you have really, really tight calves, you should stretch before a workout like this. But 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. We'll do that five to seven times with slight little increases of speed as we go through. Once we're done with that, we're going to show you the next part from there, all right? So let's take a look at that one. Now, before I start running, like I said, fittest fat kid you're ever going to see right here, right? I want you to look at what's going on with my feet, my heels, my shoulders. For those of you guys who've seen the rope videos we've done, you notice I'm doing that underhanded figure eight pattern where I'm dipping the shoulder, I'm scooping underneath, and I'm helping to activate my hip, right? Nick's going to try to get a back view in a, in a little bit also. And you see how when I run, I'm flaring my heels away. And running... For a lot of people, if I asked you, hey, is running a pushing exercise or a pulling exercise with the legs, most people have a tendency of saying they think it's a pushing-based exercise, when in actuality it's not. It's a pulling-based exercise with the glutes and the hamstrings versus a pushing-based exercise with the quads and calves. So if your answer was going to be pushing, then I really want you to pay attention to what's going on in this video, as well as some of the other videos you'll see in this email sequence, because they're going to talk to you about how you can activate the backside of your body more so you move faster, you move more pain-free, and you get better results from these workouts. So. It's supposed to be 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, five to seven rounds. I am gonna cut it down to about 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, just to give you an idea about how the workout goes. But just to give you an example, you can play around with the time any way you want, but it's shorter distance, higher intensity, with little bits of rest, little bits of rest in between. And then I'm done, I take the side rails, right? Recover for a couple seconds if I need to. 
with the curved treadmills, I like to walk as I go. If you're on a regular treadmill, the speed's gonna be up. So I'll typically just stay on the side rails or I would come completely off the treadmill and then I would jump back on. These are treadmill sprints. Take the side rails, right? I'd either hang out here, I would jump off. I'm gonna wait for my time to go by again, whatever my rest period is. And I would do that for five to seven rounds. Now, after I do my five to seven rounds on the treadmill, right? I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna grab my kettlebell. Kettlebell clean and press is 10 on each side. Medicine ball slams. I would do two sets of this, right? Now, you're gonna see, I do a very unique style of kettlebell clean and presses. It's been modified with rotational movement training, which keeps a ton of pressure off my lower back. It loads the lateral subsystem, which we keep talking about, right? And I'm working all through my legs and my glutes versus my lower back and my hip flexor, right? I do the one side. I know my reps aren't on. I'm just doing this to give you guys an example, right? <clears throat> Should be 10 on the right, 10 on the left. I'm gonna cut the reps down for demonstration purposes, right? <clears throat> this is a kettlebell clean and press modified for rotational movement training which is a great way to work around your favorite exercises for all you guys that have debilitating back pain like me. Now, I'm gonna do medicine ball slams, right? A lot of different variations of medicine ball slams you can do. We're gonna do good old fashioned, plain Jane, vanilla medicine ball slams. 10 to 14. If I get bored, I put a little rotation in there. Notice how my head stays over my foot. I don't lean outside of my foot. Stay over my balance. Right? I do 10 to 14 kettlebell medicine ball slams. Then I go back again for my second set of kettlebell cleaning presses, right? I'm only doing a couple reps right now for demonstrational purposes, but I would do a second set of 10 on the right and 10 on the left again. Don't do this. If you drop the kettlebell, your spouse, your spouse will kill you if you ruin the floor. And if you work out a plan to finish, they will kick you out. And getting kicked out of plan to finish isn't a bad thing, but if you get kicked out before the bagels and Tootsie Rolls come, that's a bad day. Now, another variation of medicine ball slams, side to side, right? This gets me moving in different directions. Once again, I would do 10 to 14. It's not a matter of one being better or the other. It's just different movement patterns to give your body something different so you're not just training straight and forward the whole time. Because the more movement you can integrate to your workout, the looser you're gonna feel throughout the day. And that was one round. So I would go back again. I would do my five to seven sets of sprints on the treadmill. I would come off, I would do my two sets of kettlebell clean and presses, 10 on the right, 10 on the left, and medicine ball slams for 10 to 14. I would do it a third time, definitely, maybe even a fourth or fifth time, but keep in mind, one round is gonna consist of the treadmill for five to seven rounds, and then two sets of kettlebell clean and presses, 10 reps on both sides, and then two sets of medicine ball slams. Now, if you don't have a medicine ball slam, you can add an ab exercise in instead of there. If you don't have a kettlebell, you can totally use a dumbbell. If you don't have a treadmill at your gym, or I mean, if you're at a gym that doesn't have a treadmill, you need to go to a different gym. But if you don't have a treadmill at your house, run the stairs up and down a couple times. Maybe you take the run outside. It's summertime right now when I'm shooting this video. It's nice out again. Maybe you have your Peloton at home, all right? Leave the video off. You can take Ramin's class later. 
just jump on, do a quick little sprint. You can swap out any of these exercises any way you want, but now you got a pushing based exercise, a rotating based exercise, you got your movement based cardio, you got a great workout. You do that two to three times a week or a workout with that kind of format, you're gonna see a ton of results in a very short period of time. So take that format, simmer on it, sleep on it, modify it so you can do different exercises and different workouts and let me know what kind of results you get because it's a great workout and like I said we've been using it for years with our clients it's one of the programs you'll find in the Ignite 1.0 program and the Kettlebell Notebook program that they're both free you can find them on my webpage where the one is a 237 page document strictly on the topic of kettlebells you're not going to find a more in-depth kettlebell training program than this I used to charge about 300 bucks for it I just give it away for free these days because you know what with the lockdowns and everything else going on, people need help, right? So, you know, I, I, I always like to deliver value on the front end, so it's free these days. You can go on my website, download it for free. Yes, you're gonna be in the email chain. If you don't want the emails, just click on subscribe. It's that simple. And the Ignite 1.0 program is the exact same system I use with all my clients for the past 20 years. That's helped thousands of people make life-changing transformations in their body. Once again, I used to charge a couple hundred bucks for that, and you had to be a client to get it. I didn't just give it out to people. Since the lockdowns and everybody's kind of like in a situation where money's tight and we need the help working out wise, I've just been giving it away for free. So if you want either of those two programs that you haven't gotten yet, shoot me an email or check out my website or check out my Instagram. You can find it anywhere. And um, yeah, try that workout out. Let me know how it works out for you. And if you're having trouble coming up with exercises because you don't have equipment or you have injuries to work around, like I said, drop me a DM. Either myself or somebody from the team will reach out to you and we'll give you the help and the tips you need to keep you going and get you to the next level, all right? Thanks for stopping by, guys. See you in the next one.